Hello, welcome to Furious Driving. I'm in an undisclosed location somewhere in southern England with this man, Ian Hello. Seabrook, aka Hubnut, and even Hi, more everyone. famous, Betty the Ford Fairmont AU. Betty the T Shelf. Betty the T Shelf doing superb T Shelfery here in this car park. We've finally brought the giant oversized imported Fords together yep. on a road so for the first time we can drive them side by side and just talk about these yeah, ridiculous I, I'm silly things. really really looking forward to it so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be driving Matt's car on my channel and we're gonna have a bit of a chat about his car and I'm gonna be driving Ian's car on my channel and I'll have a chat with him about his car let's have a look around the Fairmont first of all yeah. you've seen this already you know what this is this is a Ford Fairmont which is basically a posh Falcon yeah it, it is a slightly posher Falcon Falcon van den Pla, maybe. Yes, I was going to say the uh, the Scorpio version of the. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, of yeah. the Ford. That works. Yeah. So this is a car that you bought in New Zealand when mm -hmm. you were travelling around the world. Um, yeah. This is what two and a half years ago now. Or yeah, it was, it was November 2019. I'd started that trip driving. Uh, I borrowed a Citroen BX. Mm. But the more mileage I did, the more I realised I needed my own car. Yeah, because doing a trip like else's. that, I was driving down 90 mile beach in <laughs> someone else's Citroen BX, and it just didn't feel right. No. So uh, I, I agreed to buy this from someone I'd met at a show in Auckland. Wow. And, and then we did 5,000 miles driving around New Zealand wow. over the course of the next two months. Is that over both islands or just the North? That was both, both islands. islands, wow. Yeah, so, yeah. so all, all the, the south of the North Island and then all of the South wow. Island. How long is the ferry crossing between the two islands? Uh, ferry crossing, well, <laughs> on, the, on the way out, it was about an hour, I think. But on the way back, it was more like four hours because really? the weather was horrific. Oh, so it slowed you down. People been ill oh. all over the place. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor Betty was bouncing around <laughs> in, in, in the bottom of the ferry somewhere. Yeah. It but, was awful. But survived. Yeah, but survived. But so 5,000 miles of your history is now with this car. So can you name scratches and marks on the car where they came from? Well, actually, from? Quite, quite a few of these scratches were caused here in the UK, oh, oh, right. <laughs> which we can get to a bit later on. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, the stickers, I went to visit, visit Badgertronics, who's based near Christchurch mm -hmm. on, on the South Island. We, we uh, took the bottom of the transmission off, we changed oh, the fluid, yeah, yeah. Um, gave her a service because one of his followers had donated a load of parts. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So it's just amazing how these things happen. Yeah. Uh, this, this sticker that's fading quite badly, badly never late with a Hanmer LD28, the Nissan engine. Ah, oh, of course. Uh, I met them at a meet again in Christchurch yep. and added my own stickers as I sort of went around the country. Wow. And so it's an unusual looking car, isn't it? It's, it is it's unusual. I, new edge design. I would say your car is a bit more conventional. Yeah. A little old fashioned for the time, perhaps. I was going to say it's very old fashioned for the time. It was already out of date by the yeah. time it was built. Whereas this was someone trying to apply the new edge styling of the Ford car and the Ford Focus to a big car. Yeah. With Which is differing amounts of success, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You can. You've got to respect what they were doing. Uh, yeah. Whereas the equivalent Holden looks like a big Omega, yeah. this looks like nothing else. There, there may be um, the Ford Taurus over in America was a, little bit, yeah. a bit peculiar in the same way, but really it is a look all of its own. It is. You can sort of see it. You can see how it fits in with the, the New Age family. Yeah, yeah, it, entirely. It is. Australians are very much go their own way, do their own thing kind of people, aren't they? They, they don't, are. They don't like to, to follow the herd. Yeah, and... but, but they did have to follow that design language. Mm. That was the key requirement, yeah. is Ford US said, it's got to look like all our other yeah, cars. it's got to so, fit in the so, brand. So, so they yeah. tried. Yeah, they did their best. And yeah. it is a, an amazing thing. So you didn't, when you left New Zealand, you sold it. I sold it on, yeah. Mm. And uh, I was absolutely gutted. But yeah. at, at that time, there was no way I could justify bringing it back to the UK. No, at, the, at the time, mm. I, I didn't have a fixed home in the UK, no, so yeah. I didn't even know where it could go. But I, I just couldn't afford it at that no. time. But <laughs> lockdown changed things. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we did fairly well. Captive audience. Well, it yeah, was great yeah. for YouTubers. That, that was where my channel really kind of took off, was yeah. <laughs> thanks to, to lockdown. And also so. uh, a tax return. <laughs> Oh, okay. So ra rather than carefully invest the money, <laughs> I spent it on importing this car from the other side of the world. I consider that a very sound investment, personally. Yeah, I, I have I'm no not issues sure, with that. Not sure my accountant does, but I, I like it. <laughs> Can you write off against tax? Uh, no, <laughs> I did ask. <laughs> yeah, it's always worth asking. Yeah. So let's have a quick look inside the thing because it's um, yeah uh, fascinating. I'm going to get into the driver's side. Yeah, you go driver. I'm going to. Oh, jump. wait a minute! It's oh. on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to do something I don't usually do. I'm going to jump in the passenger side. So let's have a look. T-shelf options are... Oh dear, T-shelf fail. Yeah. 
it's too short. It's too tall. Oh, there are cup holders. Okay. We have got cup holders. This is better here. than my my Copmobile, which has got cup holders which don't really work. Yeah, I must apologise for that. It's very, very lived in because so, <laughs> unexpectedly, I bought this car back really as a high days and hol holidays sort of a car. But uh, it, she's ended up being the default daily driver. Mm. So there's you know there's bits of food all over the back <laughs> seats because the kids are always eating their dogs travel in the back. Yep. Loads of space for them, so they absolutely love it. So it, in a collection of very silly cars, although it is a very silly car, it's the least very silly car. Yeah, it's actually become the default daily. <laughs> Fuel prices, not, not making great. that attractive at the moment. No, that's less uh, good. I imagine as a probably fairly similar. Uh, yeah, in terms that's of fuel consumption. twenty to thirty, depending how you drive it. Yeah, yeah, I can just about get thirty out of this. Yeah, well, our, our mate Jim on Twitter uh, seems to be getting thirty-two out of his Chrome Yeah, Vic. he does, doesn't he? Well, how is he doing that? His is a bit newer. It's a flex fuel. Ah, oh, uh, maybe that's the key difference. I, I forget what year it is, but it's certainly it's a newer version. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, in, so, yeah. Term, in terms of the mechanical makeup of yeah. this car, you, you've got an engine, a big four-liter six-cylinder engine, which is derived from. Uh, the old American Ford mm. 6 that was using the Mustang and stuff in the 60s. Yeah. But it's evolved down its own evolutionary path <laughs> and now has an overhead camshaft. It's got yeah. variable intake runners. But this one so, hasn't, though, has it? This is No, it's got a variable oh, intake. Been... It hasn't got variable uh, valve okay. timing. Yeah. Gotcha, we yes. Weirdly, if you went for a Fairmont gear, oh, you got it, independent it? rear suspension mm. and variable valve timing. So it was yeah. quite the leap over this. It was, wasn't it? But it's an interesting model tree because you've got the Ford yeah. at the bottom with nothing. Then you get the Fairmont with a lot more stuff, the wooden things and the chrome trim. But yeah. Then the Fairmont gear is almost a different car again. Yeah, and then you've got the fair lanes, yeah. which are even larger. So, yeah, yeah very peculiar. And American names, mm. but most Americans would not recognise No, these absolutely cars. not. No, because no, the first Fairmont was a Falcon, um, but an original American Falcon from yeah. the 60s, wasn't yeah. it? When they brought it over and the Australians hated it because it wasn't tough enough or big enough. No. <laughs> so they, they developed it themselves mm. in their own direction. So. Yeah. It's, 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 what I like is the similarities between the two cars. Mm. While this is a monocoque construction, it's still got a live rear axle on yeah. coil springs yeah. with a watts linkage, <laughs> which I think yours has as well. Yeah, I think it, it's virtually the same, yeah. Mm. yeah. But yeah. But you've got a limited slip diff. I have, yeah. This is the X5 differential in that one, which is a 327 limited yeah. slip diff. And I've got hopeless traction control. Okay, was that working on the brakes so it just kills the power? No, is it? no, it just cuts the engine power. Oh, completely. okay. Oh, okay. That's, that's uh, nice oh, you're spinning your wheels. I will stop the power. Which is <laughs> Clearly, you great. want to go fast. Yeah. I will stop you going fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a fun switch, mm. basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, how long did you actually have the car for in New Zealand? Five thousand miles, but how? It was many... just under two months. That's that's pretty fast. Yeah. Accruing to miles. Given that there were, I think, three weeks in total in that time where I did very little mileage, so mm. I actually hunkered down just to try and recover because I was covering such vast. Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the worst one was when I left Invercargill, right at the bottom of the South mm. Island, w drove out to Milford Sound, which yeah. is hours down windy, windy little roads. You go through a tunnel and just come out into this magnificent bay and then had to drive back <laughs> to get to Arrowtown. Oh, I uh, remember that video. You got there and it's beautiful and you stayed like 15 minutes. And yeah, then yeah. It was just like, yeah, this is really nice, but I haven't actually got time, no, so I'm going to have to go, go back. Yeah. It's just like everyone said you had to go there, so mm, I went so there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, re you really need to go out on a boat to appreciate it. Yeah. But I, I think that was over 500 kilometres in a day. Wow, that's exhausting. Th this car just eats up that sort of distance. Yeah, it's very comfortable. Like, yeah. it's, it's Mondeo comfy, but yeah. even plusher, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because I mean, the entire dashboard looks very familiar to anyone who's yeah. ever owned a Ford. It looks We've like a European classic, radio. Yeah. yeah, the classic <laughs> European look radio, yeah, but all the buttons. curvature, yeah. very similar to uh, Mark II Mondeo, I think. Uh, Mark II, Mark III. Um, actually, let's say Mark III, but yeah, Puma, KA. Yeah, Mark One Focus. Yeah, you, you all can those see cars. all that heritage in here, mm. but but no shared parts, no actual no. shared components. No, they just and look... you'll note indicators right. Oh gosh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, because they... that's the Aussie preference. Yeah, yeah, because it's like the Japanese imports still, I suppose, because they get so many Japanese yeah. imports, so it just makes sense to. So they do it all their own way, unless it's Japanese. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the, the, the Japanese no indicators right is better. It's just mm. we got so used in Europe. Because of left-hand drive, yeah, just they, they just yeah. swapped the collar over, yeah. but uh, they wouldn't have that in Australia. No, You've got to have it's, your indicators right. It's just it's a, such a shame that Holden and Ford aren't doing really their own thing anymore because yeah. kind of things very it's unicorn. Yeah. It's like, it, like I say, you said the evolutionary independent evolution. It is. Oh, it's, completely. Yeah, it's the one button but, but kangaroo it, it, of the car. World. It was evolving into mm. a car that no one wanted. People didn't mm. want huge fuel slurping saloons. No, especially not now. Oh, gosh, no. So, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that market just died off, really. Yeah. Uh, it, this is the tail end. This is 
a much more modern dinosaur. This is Archaeopteryx, whereas that yeah. is a Diplodocus. Yeah. But they're yeah. both are dinosaurs of that. They are. Uh, yeah. some, somehow lingering on yeah. against all odds. <laughs> but the, the thing about them is that although they are ridiculous, they are very lovable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this car has so much character. Yeah. And I, didn't, I don't think I've ever owned a big car that has that sort of character about it. No. It's just silly things like the windows not working all the time, <laughs> sometimes driving along and the dashboard dies and then wakes no, up again. It just does that. Yeah, but but just the ease at which it covers distance, mm. I just absolutely love it. And I know people, cars do become a part of the family, don't they? But, yeah. But after that many miles in that kind of time, I can imagine it becoming kind of a friend almost that mm. you don't want to part with. Yeah, um, yeah. Like Although, when I, it was almost exactly a year ago, I collected it from the docks in Southampton. Mm. Uh, there was that moment uh, as leading up to it going, am I actually going to like this? Is, <laughs> is my really? memory just completely yeah. rose-tinted glasses? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 So spent... that first drive, I mm. just sort of settled behind the wheel and he just whispered away. It was just like, oh, no. I'm no, I, I like this. I'm home again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Very good. That's a relief. And, and now mm. I'm, I'm getting on for 14,000 kilometres covered. In I'm, in over, I'm now over 14,000 kilometres wow. covered here. What's that, about 8,000 So 310,000 on the clock now. Gosh, that is, that is big mileage. Yeah. <laughs> That's about 250,000 miles or so? Um, about 190, 190. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so it's still pretty huge then. Yeah, getting on for 200,000 miles. That's a lot of miles. Yeah. Wow. So the getting over here, that the way you kept that secret, that was yeah, impressively that, 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 that done. That was a challenge, but yeah. also frustrating because as anyone who's seen the video series will know, and there's also up and down vids has done mm. a... Uh, a series showing the work he was doing on the car. We had some massive issues, things like immobilizers, the, the battery went a bit low, oh, and yeah. the voltage just, the car wouldn't start. Yeah. And you go on the forums, and it just, and it just says, take it to your dealer. It's just <laughs> well, like, that's now 11,000 miles I've got to ship it back again? Yeah, so yeah. there was so much stress. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, trying to, obviously, DVLA, mm. hold-ups with COVID. Yeah. It yeah. was uh, a frustrating old business. Yeah. So how yeah. long was it on the ship for? It was a long time, It was on it? the ship for just under two months. So it's yeah. le left in January and arrived in March, right at the end of March. Oh, okay, yeah. Just avoided the Suez Canal catastrophe. Oh, yes, yeah. It was literally a few days ahead yeah. of that. So I got caught in the tail end of that because when mine came over, it took two months to get a ship. Oh gosh! Because everything was just t backed, backed up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sat in New York for two months before I could get it home. But the state of the car when it got oh, here, yeah. I, I don't know how yours came over. My, my, mine came over on a row row, effectively. Mm, I think mine and did it was in the end. Covered in salt. Oh, yeah. And uh, the headliner was all ha hanging down. This I was going to ask about it's, that. It's pinned up. Because you replaced this in, in New Zealand, didn't you? Yeah, in Christchurch. It yeah. came out of a taxi, though, which is why it's very grubby <laughs> above your head, I think. Nice. So, Glad I but I, I have a plan. I've located one in the UK. Oh, wow. That's so got to that, be the that, only one in the UK, that, apart from this one. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get replaced fairly soon. Wow. Just trying to sort the logistics out yeah. and improve things in here, no end. That will, yeah, that does make a big difference, doesn't it? Mm. And my Volvo, when I bought that, that had just like the foam backing, and every time you moved in it, it just dropped. Yeah powder in your head and it was horrible yeah not good and it just yeah looks and feels so much nice and that kind of dangly thing yeah it's I've got built-in automatic sun visor yeah perfect yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's labor really saving well. yeah, yeah, yeah I like that <laughs> well, let's have a look around under the can I open the bonnet have a quick look at yep, the engine yeah it's your side uh -huh, of course it, what was that something for that so you can see from the wheels, the car has been used extensively as an yeah, everyday brake, car. Yeah, brakes have been getting some hammer down here in the south of England. Yeah. You have to stop a lot more than in you Wales. You do, don't you? Yeah. God, but yeah, that, there, there is the beast. That is a big inch for a straight six. You think, oh, okay, it's a straight six. That's not going to be too massive. That is massive. Yeah, it's the four litre Intec overhead cam. They're very, very proud of that because yep. the equivalent Holden still used the old ex Buick V6 overhead valve engine. Yeah. So they were like, look, is, at look at our at overhead cam yeah. We've got an overhead cam and. But yeah, yeah, you've got this snail arrangement. That is yeah. the variable uh, inlet. Okay, yeah. So it really boosts the low down torque. So mm. it pulls astonishingly well. Yeah, so it's like 211 horsepower, but 357 newton meters of torque yeah. or something crazy. So it's like And a lot it delivers of power. it so low down, mm. as you'll find when you drive well, it. Yeah. I don't want to give too much no, away. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. ABS though, because it's modern. Yeah. Um, uh, air conditioning. In oh, here yes. is yeah. something called an orifice tube, which I had oh. replaced oh, in thing. Auckland. And I was thinking, is it worth me spending the money <laughs> to do that? But well, no, lucky it still you did. works. Yeah, so it well. that, Imagine that trying to get an orifice well tube for one of these over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because all the parts have to come from Australia. Yeah, yeah. There's not really any part, part support here at all. Rock Auto in America, can they get bits for it? Or? I don't think so, because they weren't sold in America. No, they, they do a lot of European cars though. And they weren't sold in Europe. Mm. Definitely. So yeah. South Africa and um, oh, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand were pretty much it. But some yeah. very good retailers. Yeah. And obviously, like like Rock Auto, um, I use um, 
online auto parts, I think it is. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Because Australia is so big, they're entirely geared up for yeah, mail order. Yeah. So it's not an issue to them. Well, it's that's, just that's useful. Yeah, a different Do, place. Does it share anything with like service items, like oil filters and things, with American cars? Or there's, there's some peculiar crossover on some parts, like the transmission sump gasket is the same as the Sang Yong. Oh, is it? Because some Sang Yongs also use this BTR transmission. Oh, okay. uh, so yeah. BTR is it evolved out of Borg Warner Australia. Mm which is why you, you'll find the gearbox is quite chatty. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll look so that, that. that's why it sounds like an old Borg Warner gearbox. <laughs> Whining and chunking away. Yeah. So this is the engine that became the Barra, or the Barra? Yes. Yeah, so yeah the Barra was the next evolution, which was mm. basically a twin cam head yeah. on this yeah. same engine infrastructure. Which is like the, the legendary Australian engine, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, they are remarkable. But these are known for longevity. Yeah. Because, yeah. Rob, rather like your car, the, yeah. these were also used as taxis. Yeah. They, which, to, to us Europeans, just seems insane. It but, does, doesn't it? Yeah, how can you make a profit running a car like yeah. that every day? It's just madness. But, it, yeah, it, these things will do a million kilometres. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've now got three cars that will do a million miles. I'm, I'm not going to live long enough to drive any yeah. of them even halfway. <laughs> well, I'm trying, but, you know, we, best, we're still yeah. on 300,000 kilometres. We've still got a long way to go. Yeah, so... What's what's the reaction like when you drive around in the UK? Do people notice it? Do people pay attention to it? Or it, I, I don't think most people notice what it is. Mm -hmm. And I even had people at the NEC saying, um, oh, there's a Mondeo here. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, try again. Yeah, it's not a Mondeo. So I, I think yeah. the looks to a petrol head stand mm. out, but for, to most people, they don't really notice it's something different. They might no. go, oh, it's strange. I recognise the badge, but not the car. Yeah. They might think it's American and then notice where the steering wheel is. But... Uh, yeah, generally there's mild bafflement or mm. complete ignorance. <laughs> and is it big enough to cause a problem when you go around like, width restrictors or drive yeah, throughs? Yeah, kind of it ca can be. Um, mm. You're always having to bear in mind how long the wheelbase yeah. is. Yeah, so like turning uh, circles. Trying, trying yeah. to park it in spaces which are already getting smaller, yeah. it seems. Yeah. Does, when you drive these, it feels like they are. Yeah. So, and, and the tight twisty lanes around here, yeah. it's not really no, it's made not, for not that. It's not for that. It's long straight roads and exactly. taking extreme abuse. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the Australian thing. They wanted cars that were just unbelievably tough, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they had to handle dirt roads. Mm. You know, thousands of kilometres of dirt roads, yeah. which is something we just don't really have no. here. No, we complain about a single pothole. They've got a thousand miles of it. Yeah. And the car has to just survive so all of the it. The suspension is a little rudimentary, but yeah. then the suspension is ridiculously tough. Yeah, it's just it to be. Yeah, taking a pounding and working. Mm. So what's the most memorable thing you've done with it in the UK so far? Um, well, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I've driven it down the steepest street in the world in New Zealand and the rival steepest street in England, oh, sorry, in yeah. Wales, in Harlech. So oh, it's yeah. actually been down both of those. <laughs> uh, so that, that's something I'm very proud of. There can't mm. be many cars that have done both. No, I think... Less, less proud of the fact that I've actually got it stuck on beaches. Ooh, Both in, the in northern and southern hemispheres. That's, so that's quite a good going as well. Yeah, o oh, yeah. open diff, yeah. big fat tires. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not good. good. No, it just sinks. No. <laughs> Floor mats out and dig a hole and try and get the thing. Yeah, through. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. yeah, you can't push it out. No, not on your. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's only about 200 kilos between these two cars, I think. I think so, yeah. So that's about yeah. 1,900 kilos. And this yeah, is I, I think this is around 1,600, 1,700. Mm. It's, a, it's a big, hefty beast. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I tried to get that trailer back from the port. Mm. And I really struggled to find someone who could take it. Yeah. Because no one was geared up for that kind of thing. Yeah, but, but these needed to be big and hefty because mm. in Australia, with the electronic towing brakes, yeah, you can yeah. tow two and a half tonnes with one of these. Wow. I've even seen photos of people towing two trailers. <laughs> <laughs> road train like a road style. train yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just extraordinary well, that's hilarious yeah oh it is it's a very uh, i don't know what's the word i'm looking for welcoming car yeah it's not through it's a friendly face on a yeah. big car it's not what you expect no it, it, i can imagine the, the shock of the new being quite quite baffling when people saw it for the yeah, first time yeah especially given how conservative the equivalent holden was yeah and australia is quite a conservative country yeah. Yeah, I think the, Hold the Holdens outsold these very comfortably yeah. indeed. Having said that, there are still a lot of these on the road. Yeah. According yeah, to the figures are. I was looking at last night. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the survival figures are just immense, which shows how well made they are yeah, as well. Yeah, they, they just keep going. Yeah, you, can't, you really can't kill them. No. So there any other... Apart from this has got to be the, the greatest T-shelf in motoring. I mean, I would even say this is better than a... A 911. It is very good, very satisfying. Yeah. And this is this car. Although the interior T shelf is not very good at all, that's a fail. No. The exterior T shelf is a 10 out of 10. Yeah. We could we could even have plenty of snacks on here as well. Mm. So when you brought it in, you didn't have to go through the rigmarole I did with the, the indicators and the fog lights. You had to have a fo fog, a fog light. light. 
Yeah, fog light, yes. I've now got a fog light living in there. In there. Uh, so okay, I've only yeah. got one reverse light. It was just yeah. easy. I didn't want a horrible cube of no. misery hanging no, off the bumper. it's like a hemorrhoid on the back of the car. Yeah, so um, yeah. my mate Kitch down at Up and Down, yeah. uh, he changed that out for a fog light, which wasn't that easy to do because no. it's cam CAN bus electrics. Oh, is it? So it's a bit oh. more involved than you think it is. I yeah. thought this was quite a simple car, but it isn't. It's mm. full of ECUs oh, and gosh. canvas wire. So I guess it could, yeah, came out in, what, 1998? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's quite a modern car so yeah. compared to that thing, which is so rudimentary, it's untrue. You look mm. at the electrics in that, and it, it is going back to the 60s, pretty much. Wow. It really is properly basic. Um, but, yeah, very, very similar take on the same idea. Mm. But interestingly, that is such a more conservative car. It looked old-fashioned when it was new, or it just looked so modern yeah. when it was new. But yeah, I'm lo really looking forward to seeing how they feel, because so similar in so many ways, but so different in so many ways yeah. as well. Yeah, oh, it's going to be an interesting old day. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we've better go and do some driving, so thanks, Ian. No worries. Oh, I love talking about this. Right, let's go and drive it. You can see the drive of this car in the next video, which will probably be in tomorrow or the day after's video, so keep tuned for that, and also head over to Ian's ch channel Hub Nut, which I'm sure you watch already, and see his opinion of the Crown Vic Whoop, in a couple of days' time. Right, stay tuned, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Bye. 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 <laughs>